Casey, thank you so much for being here. What is it that makes it so special when you receive a dozen or two dozen roses? Well, roses have wonderful meanings, but mostly when you get the red roses, we know that means love and, and yellow is friendship. So roses are always mean something good. Uh, and roses have quite a journey that they take. Most of our roses that we have in the United States come from Ecuador. Oh, I didn't know that. It's amazing. And because uh, there, most of the time, their weather is perfect. It's 12 days, 12 hours of sun and 12 hours of night, and the weather is the same. So we get a consistent product. Oh. And uh, but what happens when they bundle the roses in groups of 25, ready to ship to, to the wholesalers, um, they are pa packaged and shipped on a container out of water just a little bit above freezing. So they sort of suspended in this cryogenic state as they get to the States. And then when they arrive in the States, usually Miami, the shipping port there, they get put on a truck or a train and they're moved across the country mm -hmm. another five days oh, out of water wow. in, out of, and in this con condition of being very cold. So our responsibility when we get our roses, maybe from the wholesaler, is to revive them mm -hmm. because their heads are so heavy. So if you've ever had roses that the heads have just kind of drooped Drooped. forward, mm -hmm. it's because the stem wasn't conditioned properly to hold up those heads. Mm -hmm. So we mix a concoction of flower food and water and the commercial flower food that's made now really mimics what they were getting at the plant, on the plant. Oh. And so a little carbohydrates, a little bit of pH balance, and uh, it really does Long, extend the life of your mm -hmm. rose and harden up that stem to hold that head up. Well, there's just nothing more beautiful than a bouquet of, of roses and, uh, and the filler that goes in them. And it's just something that everyone oohs and awes over. So you're going to show us how to create this beautiful arrangement. We are. I am. Absolutely. So we're doing a classic dozen roses in a vase, and this mm -hmm. is when you would order something from the florist, or, or maybe you get them in a box at your oh, doorstep, yeah. and you think, oh my gosh, now I have to do it myself. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? So you start with a very tall, strong vase that's going to hold your, your stems, because you don't really want to cut away all that beauty. You want to mm -hmm. keep the length of your, of your roses, and by having a tall vase will already dictate um, how long you the can have length. your mm -hmm. uh, arrangement, because technically your, your tallest flower can be three times the height of your vase. Oh, for balance, um, it can be anywhere between two and three times. It's a little bit more, uh -huh. uh, a little bit balanced, but it's not quite as high as three. Um, so that's important. So you get a vase that'll hold that, and also you want to find a vase that is going to be strong enough to hold that many heavy flowers and has a little bit of a flare right. to it. So if it were a straight-up cylinder vase, they would mm -hmm. just be all tight together uh -huh. and sitting Bunched straight together. up, which mm -hmm. could look very dramatic. <laughs> However, we want to see all twelve roses. So by having a nice uh, arrangement, like a nice vase like this, will lend itself to that. So in order to do this design, uh, we have to make sure our flowers are all prepped before we start filling the vase full of them. So we're going to look at our roses first, and this one is really loaded with thorns. So you do have the beauty, but then you uh -huh. have uh, the beast part of things. <laughs> and uh, when we're working with, uh, with roses, what we really need to do is make sure that we can take away all of the uh, the thorns that are might be hurting us and mm -hmm. not necessarily just us but if you have a thorn that were to stab another stem that flower is going to suffer by having Ooh, a thorn a in its side so oh, to speak yeah. so <laughs> you don't want to have that. that so we're going to trim away our leaves and not all of them we're going to leave the ones that are going to be up above because they're not the going to be mm -hmm. in the water. Mm -hmm. And you want to take a look though because some of them do have thorns on the they back do. of the leaves. So you do mm -hmm. want to be careful in handling them. Right. And now to remove the thorns uh, from the stem, we, all we really need to do is just cut the tips off. This way mm -hmm. it's easy to handle them. They're, it's a little bit bumpy but it's not going to poke Doesn't you. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. Exactly. So we're just going to oh. do like that. And so from here we can hold it and it isn't going to hurt except that one which I missed. So <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we'll take that one off now. So that's how you're going to prep your, your roses mm -hmm. and uh, leaving the upper greenery on because it'll be, give it a nice fuller look. If you I were to see. take it all off, it might be missing something. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to lay this down over here and first thing we're going to do to start to help build our arrangement here is use some of our greenery. And is this, this what's called leather? Yes, it's leather fern. I've always fern. heard of that, and I think it's a, oh, it's leather it's fern. It's a leather fern. Okay. Yeah, it is a fern, but it's leather fern, and um, it's a wonderful fern. It's a wonderful color green, uh -huh. which doesn't clash with anything. It's not too springy. It's not too silvery, so we really like it, and it goes with uh, it goes with everything, and uh, it has wonderful nice ladder of, uh -huh. of fronds on it, so you can take away if you need to, or you can leave them all on there. Um, the two lower ones might be a little bit low, so we're going to trim those away. And what we want to do, give those a little quick trim, mm -hmm. is we're going to be placing our fern around the base of our, okay. of our vase. And that's going to kick us off. Let me grab these. And I'm just going to take a little bit off. And even if they're 
missing mm -hmm. a few fronds here and there. They still are going to add to our our um, our look. So we're just going to keep adding this them. This is the around. background. This is so the background. To speak. Yes. Let me give some a little bit more generous. And what you want to do when you're putting them in, you want them to, to lean them against the side, and you want to crisscross your the stems in the water. Oh. So I'm going to do I'm going to do about mm -hmm. five of them, and that's going to give us a little of what we call underwater mm -hmm. architecture. Oh, oh, thank you. That was a hanger on her. Underwater architecture. Oh. So that way, our stems are crisscrossed below, and that's going to help us when we start to place our roses. They sort of hold the roses. They do. Mm -hmm. But we're actually, we're, when we add our roses, those are also going to crisscross okay. and they'll add even more. <laughs> so that's our first layer is our fern. And then from here, we're going to do, since we have a dozen, we're going to do six around the lower lowest stage, then we're going to do five, and then we're going to put one more in at the top, which the top will be our one, twelve. Tallest one. Because uh -huh. often some people, they start with the tallest and then try to fill in around uh -huh. it, but it takes a lot of work to do that. So you're better so off you're building from first. the outside up. Okay. Like think about a cake tier. Mm -hmm. So six, five, and one. one. So what we do is we're going to take one of our prepped flowers, and we're just going to put it in and see where it's going to stand. And that's a little tall for our first round. Oh, so uh -huh. I'm going to pull it needs that. To be lower than it does for the need first to be round. for the first round. I'm going to take a good two and a half inches off. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to check that, and I like how that places because we're, that's going to be our first round. Because remember, our tallest one mm -hmm. can only be two to three times the size of the mm -hmm. vase. So now oh, then you'll I, use that as a gauge. I'm going to use this as my gauge. Measure. So I'm going to lay it down <laughs> next to my other five that are going to be our candidates for the lower. And I'm going to trim them all the same length because all their heads are even. All of them at an angle so they don't sit flat at the bottom of the vase. Mm -hmm. And there's that 10 second rule how the stem closes in about 10 seconds. Wow. But we're going to just go ahead and, and place them in there. And they're just going to go all around, facing out. There's three down. Three to go. Three to go. <laughs> <laughs> and again, crisscrossing uh -huh. around the bottom creating your own underwater architecture so you're not having to build any kind of grid or anything on top. No, I've seen it where they do the, the uh, like, tape yes. across the top. and but, that's a great technique, too. Uh -huh. That's but very this helpful. this is really nice. Right. So uh -huh. you want to fuss around, and don't be shy of working with them. You've conditioned your flowers. They're strong and sturdy, so you can actually work with them a little bit and just get them in the right position. Okay. So there we have our first six. Some greenery in there. That little guy was yeah, turned over. Turned over. We'll just leave them in there because that's going to help also mm -hmm. adding that. So now our next layer, We've we're going to add next. Oh, we're well, gonna actually going to add next. a little bit of filler. So oh. this is called wax flower, and this is comes. It's almost evergreeny mm -hmm. uh, smell. It has a wonderful uh, smell, a little bit like beeswax. Um, and this has become a very a popular new filler. It's sort of taken place of the baby's breath that oh, not everybody yeah. likes, also known as uh, gypsophilia. Kit and I at Flower Duet, we love everything. Uh -huh. We love every flower, so, <laughs> but we especially love the wax flower, and it comes in a lovely purple, too, so you could do this with yellow with purple mm. wax. That would be really nice. So what we're going to do with this, though, we're going to take some of the lower stems, and we're just going to add them right in here low, and we're going to pull off, again, any little greeneries. So that, that is there. very important on everything you put in there. Yes, and I'm going to give it another trim since it's been sitting out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I've cut the top part off of this, which we're going to use, but the lower part, you're not going to see that. So we're just going to stick that in there in between everybody else. And this is adds to that girth nice and low. And add a little bit more off of there. You probably have done this so often, you don't really have to measure. You're doing that to show us. <laughs> That's Makes true. me feel better. Just a little bit uh, each time, just uh -huh. to see where we are. But you know, sometimes I've cut things a little short, so and uh, or left things a little bit too long. So now, what this does? See, I would stop right there. I think that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it is beautiful. I agree. Thank you. But I think what we need to do is go ahead and keep on going. So let's add now our next round. And, so this um, would be five. This would be five. A little bit longer. And what I'm also going to mention is that I've pulled one away that's our tallest, and so it's pretty. actually still closed the most. Uh -huh. So you want your tallest and your smallest to be oh, at the top uh -huh. because okay. it, when it's you're like a pyramid. Very good because you want low and large, tall and small. And tall if you think of the, okay. makes sense that way. Yeah. So then for here again, we're going to do a test and see where the length is going to fall for these because you don't want it too tall, that would no. be silly, mm -hmm. um, 
But gosh, that's pretty good. You're almost exactly right. You did well. <laughs> <laughs> that was just by chance. So what I'm going to do is. But you'd still need to retrim them. Then I'm going to trim everybody, even uh -huh. if they're all the same length. So you're just going to take. I'm going to take a little bit of off everybody. Again at that angle. Go along for my next five. And I'm going to give you two to put in. There are some thorns in the back of some of those leaves, okay. so be careful. And again, you're just going to place it in there. And if you have to twist the stem a little bit to get it in there, because there's lots of uh, stems going on, yeah, right in there. Good. See, they're holding nicely oh, here. Pretty. This is looking better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glad you didn't stop earlier. Thank you. Yep, slide it in. Great. Those are beautiful flowers. And we'll slide this one in. Give it a little twist. Uh huh. Terrific. So from here now, it is almost ready to hold that last piece, but we're going to add a little bit more wax flower just because it's so sweet and delicate. Because you like and, it, too. And because I like <laughs> it, yes. And I'm going to take this little piece, too. Yeah, I've seen the baby's breath. I like baby's I breath. I do, too. I, I think just, it's very sweet, um, and sometimes it's just the perfect thing to just finish something mm -hmm. off. So for this one... Well, you one, need that touch of white, a, a, another color in there, I think. You do. A little bit of contrast. So this one I'm going to start slide in that side, uh -huh. and I think this one will just take a little bit more off. I'm going to slide it in this side. Mm -hmm. And now we're ready for one our very more. last one, and I'm Need just going to hold roll. it up. Yes, and oh, I think it's gorgeous. almost the perfect height. I'm going to give it a quick trim, and if all goes well, it should <laughs> hold up. <laughs> I'll keep my fingers we'll crossed. Slide that in there with all those other stems, and it should oh. stand tall. That's great. Voila. That is just beautiful. And it really was easy to make if you just know how to start and what pieces to use. Thank you so much, Casey. You're so welcome. It's a pleasure.